This is a collection of pretty sounds from the analog telephone network of the Commerce, Georgia area, recorded in April 1977. The Commerce area, telephonically, is served by an NX1 office in Commerce, which acts as a local office giving dial tone to subscribers, a local tandem connecting the various Commerce tributaries with each other, and a long-distance tandem connecting the Commerce area to the world. When you're standing at a Commerce payphone, you can call any of the six tributaries. Commerce will then get the trunk, making its usual NX1 noises, and dial four digits into it, then drop you on it. You'll then hear what kind of a trunk it is. Here's a call to Pendergrass that left me high and dry, but I got to hear that wire trunk sound that only this area seems to have, at least as far as my tapes go. This NX1, when you're dialing numbers, sounds exactly like the Greenville, North Carolina main NX1. But when you don't hang up long enough, as I did there, you get a reorder tone instead of a busy signal. In fact, here, any call ultimately will end in a reorder tone if you stay off hook long enough. Here's a vacant number in Homer. This again goes out on one of those wire trunks. I'm sorry, the number you have reached is not in service at this time. If you need assistance, please hang up and dial your operator. This is a recording, 404-677. It's only because I've been listening to these tapes with headphones for over 20 years that I can hear this, so I don't expect everyone to get it, but this trunk, it's just a clear view. That's the best way I can describe it. It's as if all they did was take a pair of those big, thick, open wires and used it as a voice channel, and the amplification doesn't add any resonance. It's just clear and open. And when I flash... There's so much bass response in the click it makes when it responds. Yeah, that. See, that last click is the equipment, including the trunk, responding. There's so much bass response. In the Bell system, the wire trunks are mid-rangier, and they have resonances that this just doesn't have. In the first Commerce program, I called over to Jefferson from Commerce and got an O-carrier trunk. This is a recording, 404-367, vacant level. This time, I'm going to call Jefferson and get a wire trunk that has no resonance and some hum harmonics that you don't usually hear on trunks. This is the office that used to have the Stromberg ring but now has modern-sounding ringtones. I'm sorry, the number you have reached is not in service at this time. If you need assistance, please hang
hang up and dial your operator. This is a recording. 404-367. This trunk again sounds like a so-called clear view to me. It just has a less typical constellation of 60 Hz harmonics. Next is a call to Mayfield that again goes over a hummy wire trunk, but this time the NX-1 is superimposing a power supply buzz, which makes it hard to hear. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. This is a recording, 404652, vacant level. You hear this kind of a buzz on NX1s a lot, and I think in this case we really can tell if we listen carefully. Yeah, underneath the buzz you can hear that's the way a local wire trunk around here hums. Fairly typical. Here's a vacant level in Brazelton. This time we get a T-carrier trunk, I think. Again, the NX-1 puts the power supply buzz on. And since NX-1s do allow the subscriber to flash through on local outgoing calls, I'll use that to reset the intercept trunk a few times. number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. This is a recording, 404654, vacant level. reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. This is a recording, 404654, vacant level. We're sorry you have reached a number that has been disconnected. Three guesses as to why for years I assumed these tapes were too monotonous to present to the public. I, I don't know. In fact, this is what the entire commerce area sounds like if you're not paying attention to the details. Hello. 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 This is a recording. And speaking of details. Okay, I've got Dove Song in my Commerce Georgia tape. Thank you very much. Shut up! Thank you. There is a noise that the Commerce NX-1 is making after the third digit of every office code or area code that I dial that I don't think I've heard other NX-1s make. I could be wrong about that, but I've never noticed it before. It seems like it's a little bit louder when I dial 1 plus an area code, which of course eventually gets restricted when I dial the rest of the number. I don't know what this noise is, might have to do with toll restriction, but who knows. Any event, here are some calls where I dial 1 plus a long distance number and am prevented, and I'll point out the noise.
There. That is kind of weird. Now, when I dial the rest of the number, you'll hear billing ticks, but it won't succeed. I don't know how that works, but it works. No toll. I'm going to do the same thing again and not talk over the middle. And after the third digit of the area code, you'll hear it again. Did you get me area code 212-634-9970? Are you playing for here? Yes. Number you're calling from? 355-9042. Thank you. By the way, I misspoke my number, but the operator doesn't call me on it. I guess she knew what I meant. Charge, sir, is 2.15 for the first three minutes, but don't deposit until they answer. Right. So I'm reaching a busy. You want to try again later? Sure. All right. trying to just hang up, but... Why is it that in NX1 places, 411 has to be able to hold up? Director assistant. Oh boy, where's my Engelbert Humperdinck record when I need it? Finally. Truth is, I never owned this record. I hated it, but it sure would come in handy. Please release me, let me go. Oh, that's funny. It's in F. It's in the key of F, which makes it harmonize with the dial tone that you wish you could get when you're saying that to the operator. Please. Hey, that's, that's a pretty good dial tone. Please. Trouble is, it would have to go on longer, though. Please. Boy, good thing it timed out. Otherwise, you know, he'd have a hell of a time holding that C. But anyway, I'm going to call repair service and do the same shit again.
Six one one, same thing. Good morning, repair service. Yeah, I uh, can't get a dial tone from this phone. Every time I pick up, I get repair service. Well, hang up the dial again, please. Okay. <laughs> Lordy, I'm so innocent. I'm just picking up my phone and hearing repair service. I don't know why. Anyway, here's dialing one followed by zero. Got you by mistake, sorry. And before we go, let's try a toll call one more time, just to hear those billing clicks again. The other commerce area offices are Stromberg XYs, and I recorded all of them except Nicholson, 757. Here are some more recordings from Homer, 677. Homer is the one office that covers a lot of Banks County. Most of the commerce area is in Jefferson County. There was only one payphone I used in Homer, and from this phone I kept hearing some strange squealing noises. Since I've only used this one phone line in Homer, I don't know whether these squealing noises would be heard on any Homer phone line, or whether there was just something about this one line that had them. I never heard anything quite like it anywhere else. Dialing from Homer, the first thing I noticed was that some first selectors, when you got dial tone, had ground hum on them, and some did not. Here's a recording of my getting a dial tone in Homer three times. The first two times, I get dial tones with ground hum, the third time I get a clear dial tone, and I let it go on for a while. Without bass response headphones, you might not notice the ground hum, but it's very much there, and all through this you will be able to hear those mysterious squealing noises. I dialed a 2, which absorbed, and here are some of those noises in the power supply or on the line, as the case may be. That sound reminds me of something. Uh, what is it? The TiVo that I had in the early 21st century, back before I completely threw my TV out the window. Yeah, that's it. But the TiVo sound actually reminds me of something else. What is it? It's, um, uh... Yeah, there you go. Anyway, back to Homer. Here is a local 677 vacant number. The 2000 group has its connector switches right on the first selector, so you dial 6772 and all of that is absorbed.
I'm sorry, the number you have reached is not in service at this time. If you need assistance, please hang up and dial your operator. This is a recording. 404-677. On that last call, the thousand group was absorbed. The office code 677 is completely unnecessary. Here's getting a Homer number ringing, dialing only the last four digits. That connector group in the 2000 group was right on the first selector. So everything was absorbed until the last three digits of the phone number. However, there are some Homer numbers that do use a second selector. And not all of the second selectors sound the same. We're going to hear one that sounds like this. And then another that sounds like this. Here's an absorbed digit, followed by a digit that cuts into a second selector. Watch what happens when I hang up here. I try to get a new dial tone, but at first it doesn't come on and I have to flash again before the line finders start moving. That was a cut in. This is a different sounding second selector. Okay, there we got a local number to ring, and each of the four digits went somewhere. That shows there's more than 1,000 group in this office. That's a 2, which absorbed. Now let's try 8, see how the commerce trunks sound. Oh boy, T-carrier. All right, here's a vacant number in Nicholson. I'm sorry, the number you have reached is not in service at this time. If you need assistance, please hang up and dial your operator. This is a recording, 404-757. All right, so we won't be dialing a lot of eight calls here. It's T-Carrier to Commerce, and you can't even hear the NX-1 pulsing on these trunks. Did you notice that the Nicholson Intercept, supervised, went off hook? Lunk? I'm sorry. You should be. Well, that's not your fault. The point is, that will charge long-distance callers. Me, I'm calling from a post-pay coin phone, so all it means is that I can't talk to the recording, my mouthpiece shorts. Not a problem in this case. And speaking of calling from a coin phone, long-distance calls are not allowed here. You dial 1 plus the number, and as soon as the toll center, which in this case is the Commerce NX1, sends the handshake asking for our phone number, the local relays in this office will dump us to a busy signal. You'll hear a little burst of NX1 power supply buzz right before that happens. And in spite of the fact that the one trunks are T-carrier, this overall sounds kind of cool. So here it is.
Hmm, I hung up and I don't have a dial tone. And now... Sometimes in these small steps and XYs you can defeat the toll restriction by flashing your hook around the time that it's happening. I didn't succeed here, but I did manage to make it give me a reorder tone instead of a busy signal. So that's at least a hopeful sign. Here's when that happened. Nice NX1 power supply buzz at that moment again. You know, these toll restriction things leave the trunk on the line. They hang it up right in your face and they superimpose the busy signal or reorder tone. You can't always tell that the trunk is still there, but in this case, you really can because the tea carrier noise is so loud. So I'm going to call the operator and hang up on her and just confirm that yes, she really can hold the line up. I think she can hold the line. Yep, she's still there. Oh boy. Anyway, it doesn't matter because I'm going to Brazelton. Let's see if... Free at last. Now here are some pretty sounds from Brazelton 654. It has a lower pitched dial tone than Homer does. And there's a pleasant power supply noise that is very loud on the selectors. You can even hear it under the dial tone. Dial the two, which is absorbed. That was a line finder. There are customers dialing. And on the first selector, you can even hear Jane saying, I'm sorry, at regular intervals. I think I hear her saying, I'm sorry, rather than, we're sorry. That means it's the vacant number recording that is leaking through. Let's call it. And for those of you who have never used a real telephone switch, let me just remind you that there was nothing to limit the high frequencies, except the telephone lines themselves. These Autocron machines often had high frequencies above 6 kilohertz, and you can hear that in these two recordings. Sorry, the number you have reached is not in service at this time. If you need assistance, please hang up and dial your operator. This is a recording. 404654. <laughs>
We're sorry you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. This is a recording, 404654, vacant level. There was a certain randomness to the subtle changes in that reorder tone. I had to let it go on a while. And I had to turn the volume down because the recording was so loud. Now the local busy signal here also has sort of random changes in the background noise. Sometimes you hear ring, other times you hear low tone. And it's the same whether you get it on a connector or the callback circuit. So here it is a use of the callback circuit to ring my own phone. Now, the Stromberg XY callback circuits don't let you hear the call progressing, so I'm going to dial two digits. After that, I'll dial my seven-digit number, and during that time, you won't hear much because the callback circuit is not transparent. When I've dialed the whole number, you'll hear the local busy signal. It'll ring my phone when I hang up, and there will be some cool power supply noise on the callback circuit after I answer. I think I'm on the lockout relay now. From here, a flash ought to put me into the idle mode where I get a dial tone. Here goes. Hmm, didn't happen. I'll try again. This office, Brazelton 654, has some interesting power supply noise. We were just hearing the part of the callback circuit where people talk. I turned up the volume. Yeah, that sounds like this. And before we leave, let's listen again to the first selector, which has Jane saying, I'm sorry, at regular intervals. Then I'll dial a digit to get us onto the second selector, which doesn't have Jane, but it still has a lot of line finder noises and such. Here goes. Here are two calls that apparently were recorded from a different phone in Brazelton since the high-pitched power supply noise is barely audible. First, here's a recording of when I got accidentally stuck on a one trunk. I was picking up and hanging up and ended up flashing a one. I then found that I could not release the phone line, but I figured out what to do.
sorry. Oh, this is wonderful. I'm held up on a one truck. I know a sure way to get off, though. I'll try to direct dial something. I'll dial 212 plus Since these are Stromberg Carlson XYs, let's include the signature trait of the XY step, and that is if you dial a digit on the dial tone that needs to be blocked, the reorder comes on right away. It's been an unexpected pleasure to work with these tapes, I must say. I uh, overlooked them until that whole Not Jane thing required me to listen, and this is good stuff. I actually feel good listening to the clarity of these wonderful sounds. It's a heck of a place to find beauty in the network, but here it is. How about that? Well, that's it for this little series and this program.